Good morning. It's, it is still morning here. It's Sunday morning here. Uh, I don't even know what day this is. I have to look to see. I know it's around the 20th. No, it's the 21st. 21st. <clears throat> and this is uh, my latest update on information that I've collected uh, from looking at my various websites that I go to and talking to the different people that I talk to from back home in Manta. Uh, I want to read a comment that I got after my last uh, update. It's from a gentleman named Matt Smith. He said, hey Don, I've been watching you off and on. I wanted to say you entertain people and I feel you make a difference in their lives. You make people feel good. That's a gift. I'm trying to learn to, to be really like you, hopefully to make a difference. You know, that's the kind of comments I like to, to hear, <laughs> you know, it's that, that shows that they're uh, genuinely nice people still out there in spite of all the crap that's going on in both countries. I'm learning a lot about the U.S. economy and I'm not going to get into a political discussion about it. Any comments that have anything to do with the, the economy in the United States, other than I'll accept you agree or disagree with me, uh, I'm just going to remove the comment. The, the worst thing you can say on my channel is that you blame it on Biden or Trump or uh, Obama. I firmly believe that the economic problems in the United States have everything in the world to do with corporate greed. I believe that corporate profits are driving half of the inflation. That's what I believe. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. I collected some data that I found this morning through my research. I found out this morning that the family of Fito, the criminal mastermind, the gang leader of the Los Chaneros gang uh, has been found in Argentina. <laughs> I think they were found in Cordoba, Argentina. Somebody may correct me on that. I think they, they found them in Cordoba, Argentina. I can't think of a better place to go to in South America than just about anywhere in Argentina. But it says the family of the Fito has been found in Argentina and is being extradited to Ecuador. The U.S. hasn't updated its travel warning for Ecuador, but should you worry about visiting? According to Fodder's Travels, a website that somebody sent me, it's all about travel. I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I'm going to put a link to all of my sources of information, folks, uh, in the description. I don't know how many of you actually look at the description. There's useful information in the description on every one of these videos. It's up to you to just take the effort to look. You click on the links and go and make your own decision about whether it's fake news or, or not. Some stuff that I read this morning is on January 8th, this is everybody knows this, Ecuadorian President Daniel Noboa declared a nationwide state of emergency in Ecuador for a period of 60 days, following days of armed conflict between a country's military and organized crime gangs. Gang attacks and threats, including car bombs, have been set off in major cities, but many reports indicate that the cities have remained relatively calm as law enforcement uses the emergency declaration to fight gang activity. So what does this mean for International travelers bound for Ecuador. So here's what we got, okay? The U.S. Embassy in Quito noted in a security alert on January 12th that the June 2023 travel advisory for Ecuador remains in effect. Nationwide, the State Department rates Ecuador level two. Now, I did took some notes to see what exactly these mean. And level two means exercise increased caution, okay? That's for the country of Ecuador. It remains in effect nationwide. State Department rates Ecuador level two, all right? 
Specific areas of the country are rated level three. Level three is reconsider travel. Okay. And then um, while others are rated at level four. Okay. So reconsider travel. Yeah. So specific areas of the country are rated level three. Re, uh, reconsider travel while others are rated level four. Do not travel. I don't know what level one is. I didn't find anything for level one. Maybe that's just like we have AA batteries, AAA batteries, C cell batteries. What happened to B? Sorry, I just kind of thought of that. So anyway, uh, do not travel. Level three and level four rated parts of the country include portions of the city of Waikil, or for some of you people, Guayaquil. Waikil. I chose Waikil because that's what my girlfriend said it's called. A popular embarkation point for the Galapagos, the top tourist attraction. Foreign visitors entering the country from the land borders with Colombia and Peru, you heard me say this last week, are required to present documentation that you're not uh, and you're not, you don't have a criminal record, okay? You have to have a clean record. U.S. consular officials in Ecuador are unable to assist in obtaining these certificates, but the vast majority of Americans visiting Ecuador for leisure purposes arrive at the airports in Quito or Waikil, and believe it or not, in Monta. So just for information's sake, those of you that want to come here, you can now, if you're wanting to come to Monta, you can come here via Panama City on Copa Airlines. So check it out, okay? They have one flight in per day and one flight out. I don't know if that's seven days a week, but I know it is, I think pretty sure, Monday through Friday, they have an inbound and an outbound flight. I left on the outbound flight last Tuesday, and it was only like an hour and a half to Panama City. It was a great flight. So Travel Weekly notes that Lynn Blod Expeditions, which operates two vessels in the Galapagos, canceled the January 12th and January 13th sailings with National Geographic. Endeavor 2 and National Geographic Islander 2 out of the abundance of caution, citing lack of clarity surrounding availability of flights and other transport options around the country. Current in-progress expeditions on both ships are planned to continue until their scheduled disembarkation dates. Okay? Representatives for Cruise Line Celebrity and Silver Sea, they come into Monta often, and land-based tour companies Intrepid and G Adventures advised Travel Weekly they were continuing to monitor the situation in the country. I do know this, that last week some cruise ships were supposed to come in to Monta, but they said, nope, we ain't going there, and they bypassed and went on uh, south or north, okay? U.S. embassies and consulates in Ecuador remain open and are providing consular services as conditions permit. The U.S. Oh, what the hell have I got all over my face? I'm slobbering on something. <laughs> Must have been from that oatmeal cookie I had. Uh, the embassy advised U.S. citizens in the country to monitor Ecuador's security information website for detail on emergency road closures and follow the embassy and consulate on social media for the latest updates. The airports, Guayaquil and Quito remain open and passengers traveling to or from airports are exempt from curfews implemented by the emergency declaration provided they show identification and an airline ticket or a boarding pass. Okay, you got that? Although the airports remain open, several US and foreign Airlines have canceled several flights over the past week. Now, I mentioned that last week, and somebody came back in in the comment section and said, nah, they canceled that. those flights are not canceled, blah, 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 but they didn't give me a source. Okay, so folks, don't, don't argue with me and tell me that I'm wrong about something. Unless you have a source that's reliable on proof and verifiable clarification that is true, and then I'll accept it, okay? And... And we'll be buddy buddies. Yeah, I bet that'll be the highlight of your life. 
The security situation in Ecuador has deteriorated over the past several weeks as the country's president and attorney general announced a crackdown on drug cartels operating from within the, the country's prisons. Okay, it's operating from within the prison. That's where most of this stuff is going on. This led to clashes within and outside prisons and begin in between warring gangs, which are now contending with the government's emergency declaration, giving law enforcement far-reaching powers. The U.S. Embassy further noted that crime levels in the country have already elevated and that organized crime units are not the only threat. Crimes of opportunity were also possible against travelers and other targets. The Embassy reports that major cities across Ecuador remain relatively calm while police military operations continue in response to sporadic gang attacks and threats. Travelers bound for Ecuador should remain in contact with the tour operator or cruise line that operates your trip or updates on whether the departures will even operate. Travelers should also check with their airlines for updated flight status and register with the State Department's Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. That's STAT. Okay, I've talked about that before and I've done a couple of videos about it. To receive updates on the situation before and during their travel to Ecuador. Okay. So in summary, okay, so in summary of what I just said, I probably should have just said this first, okay? In response to armed conflict between the military and organized crime gangs, Ecuadorian President Daniel Noboa declared a nationwide state of emergency for 60 days. Despite reports of gang attacks, including car bombs in major cities, law enforcement efforts under the emergency declaration have maintained relative calm. International travelers bound for Ecuador are advised to exercise caution with the U.S. Embassy maintaining a level two travel advisory for the country. Specific areas including parts of Waikil are rated levels three and four. Lindblad, Lindblad expedition, expeditions cancel settings, sailings as a precaution while other travel companies monitor the situation. U.S. Embassies and consulates in Ecuador remain open urging citizens to stay informed about emergency road closures. Airports in Waikon and Quito are open, but flight cancellations have occurred. The security situation exacerbated by crackdown on drug cartels poses risk beyond organized crime with elevated crime levels reported. Travelers are advised to stay in touch with tour operators, airlines, and register with the State Department's Smart Traveler, the STEP program, okay? So now I want to emphasize this, okay? The U.S. Embassy in Quito noted in a security alert on January 12th that the June 23rd travel advisory remains in effect, okay? Actually, I've already told you that, so I'm not going to say that again, all right? So that's that, okay? It's the same thing every day, folks. You just, you know, be informed. That's what you have to do, be informed. What's the best way to be informed? Watch this channel, I guess. I'll try to give you as much information as I can. Okay, so here's some headlines for you. I collected some headlines today and I'm gonna share them with you. And by the way, in the description, as I've said before, down below will be the web uh, links to all this information that I'm giving you. Here's the headlines, cancellations, of tourist reservations reach 80% due to the state of emergency. All right, that's according to Premises newspaper. Premises, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that or not. I'm sure somebody will delightfully, you know, uh, correct me on that during the day. You wouldn't believe it, some of the stuff I've been getting from some people. Somebody actually called me a pussy and, and said that I ran away from Ecuador and moved back to the States. You, some of you people are just not listening. Everybody, everybody on this channel, understand I am not fleeing Ecuador and I'm not running away. I'm not moving away from Ecuador. At least not yet. I still have a car there. I got money there. I got CDs there. I have an apartment there. Clothes, my camera gear, all my stuff is there. I'm going back. It's unbelievable how many people say, oh, I'm so sad to hear that you're leaving. As if I'm leaving forever. Another headline, military intercepts semi-submersible and seizes USD $50 million in cocaine. Three Colombians arrested. There's a picture of us. Look at this boat. This isn't this beautiful, high tech, man. They caught this guy like three miles offshore 
and they arrested him. Hermitism surrounds the return of the alias Fito family to Ecuador. I already told you about that. But here's the link. The link's in the description. 2,578 detained in Ecuador from January 9th to January 20. Esteban Torres, uh, the Vice Minister of Government, Esteban Torres, assured this Saturday, that's yesterday, that uh, the daily average of violent deaths in Ecuador has dropped from 28 to 6. Okay, that's good news, right? 28 to 6. Thanks to the recent actions of the government of Daniel Noboa, our fine president. 2,578 detained. That's amazing. So since the Internal conflict was declared on January the 9th. The National Police and Armed Forces uh, arrested all these people, 2,578, for different crimes. It's reported by the national government in the presentation of results with a cutoff date of January 20th. The detailed specifics specifies that 158 of the detainees in the last 12 days have been linked to the crime of terrorism during the more than 29,000 operations that have been carried out throughout the country. Put a link in the description to that story. You can go in there and read the rest of it for yourself. All right? And then, of course, the other one is, I like this one here. Look, check this woman. Isn't this a piece of work? The National Police captured alias Mamita with 20 pieces of dynamite. Mamita was captured during a police operation in the Ogar de Cristo, Cristo sector sector northwest of Waikil, the woman had in her possession 20 sticks of dynamite that could be used for terrorist acts in the city. Really? Because you know she's certainly not going to do any demolition with it, not purposeful demolition, like tearing down old wrecked buildings from that are left over from the earthquake that have been there since 2016. Like, bring some of those up here to, to Monta, and we, we got quite a few abandoned buildings that could be demolished. So let's, let's put those sticks of dynamite to, to use, okay? So anyway, that's it. I'm still here in Phoenix. It's kind of rainy and cold and chilly, you know? Cold compared to Monta. I'm going to have to put a jacket on when I go out today. And uh, probably going to go uh, this afternoon, maybe go to my favorite restaurant, Carabas, and have myself a little steak. So... It'll be the first one since I've been back, and I'm sure I'll pay dearly for it. But, you know, it's just what I gotta do. Thanks for watching this channel. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like this video, bite me. And I say that with peace and love. Okay, see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.